The top stories tonight in Y News. The Department of Foreign Affairs maintains that the vaccine donation of the Chinese government has no connection with the recent development in the West Philippine Sea. Second batch of newly arrived Sinovac vaccines to be allotted to health workers in the National Capital Region and four provinces. Government warns against churches defying religious gathering ban in general community quarantine areas. And Twitter founder Jack Dorsey's first ever tweet has been sold for 2.9 million U.S. dollars. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, March 24, 2021. I am Horilin Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. Mangelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. The Armed Forces of the Philippines believes that the Chinese fishing vessels lingering and moored around Julian Felipe Reef are operated by Chinese maritime militia. The military forces says they will increase visibility of naval assets in the disputed West Philippine Sea. Leia Ilagan will tell us why. AFP Chief of Staff General Cirilito Sabihana confirmed that the 183 Chinese vessels sighted in the Julian Felipe Reef are fishing boats. But General Sobihana believes that these fishing boats are operated by the Chinese Maritime Militia or CMM because of the formation of the vessels. We are trying to assess uh, why they did such kind of a formation because by layer sila uh, as if uh, they are forming like a phalanx. So we are trying uh, to do some uh, uh, assessment, military assessments on uh, that kind of a formation. And uh, we will, anyway, ma'am, we are uh, uh, jointly uh, doing or assessing the situation with uh, the concern department, including the NTF West Philippine Sea. And whatever assessments we came out or we come out, uh, that will dictate our subsequent action. The AFP Chief of Staff said, they will increase visibility of naval assets in the disputed West Philippine Sea to ensure the safety and security of Filipino fishermen. So uh, we do not uh, tolerate uh, incursions in our uh, territorial waters uh, from anybody. So uh, we stand or uh, uphold by our uh, uh, mandate. China has denied allegations that maritime militia manned the fishing vessels. Chinese ambassador to the Philippines Wang Zilian says the fishing vessels are taking shelter in the area due to rough sea conditions. He further stated that the ships are in Nansha Island or Spratlys in South China Sea. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Foreign Affairs maintained that the vaccine donation of the Chinese government has no connection with the recent development in the West Philippine Sea. This comes after former Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonio Papio said in a television interview that uh, uh, it is possible that China is trying to soften the blow of seizing the country's maritime zones by donating vaccines. In a tweet, DFA Secretary Daddy Luxin Jr. said that two events are unrelated, adding that any reduction of commitment to the country's rights in the West and South China Seas is the same as disloyalty to the country. Nearly 200 Chinese vessels were spotted at the Julian Felipe Reef, which is within the country's exclusive economic zone. On Sunday, Luxin filed a diplomatic protest against China over the matter. In today's confirmation hearing of DFA senior officials, the Foreign Affairs Secretary reiterated that aside from the country's victory on the 2016 arbitral ruling, the Philippines has mutual defense treaty with the United States in its power. Any attack 
on a Philippine vessel, however small, as long as it is a government vessel, like a Coast Guard, is an attack on the United States and triggers the Mutual Defense Treaty. And believe me, that response is, uh, shall I say, global. And that lies within our power. If you don't send that message to the other side, then they will just keep trenching and trenching and trenching on our territory. And then our sense of nationhood dies. The United States Embassy earlier pledged its support to stand with the Philippines, its oldest treaty ally in Asia. However, the Chinese Embassy dismissed this, saying that the U.S. is not a party to the South China Sea issue. It also denied the allegation that the vessels found were militia vessels and insisted that the reef is part of their territory. But for Senator Rizon Tiveros, China should stop twisting the truth to serve its own interest. The senator adds the palace should reassess its so-called friendship with China, noting that it has caused irreversible damage to the Philippine seas. Meanwhile, for Senator Richard Gordon, the Chinese government's destabilizing actions in the disputed waters contradicts its pronouncements of, of friendship with the Filipino people. He urged the Chinese government to adopt policies and actions that contribute to the peace and stability in the region and not create an impression of a bullying neighbor. Meanwhile, the international community is expressing concern over the destabilizing actions in the South China Sea following the deployment and lingering of Chinese vessels near the Julian Felipe Reef. Rosa de Cos will tell us why. Tension is brewing anew over the disputed South China or West Philippine Sea. This after about 200 Chinese vessels were spotted at Julian Felipe Reef recently. The shallow coral region is within the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines and about 175 nautical miles west of Palawan Province. The United States of America shared the concerns of the Philippines and accused China of using maritime militia to intimidate and provoke other nations, which undermines peace and security. The Japanese ambassador in the Philippines also commented on the issue. In a message posted on Twitter, Japanese Ambassador to the Philippines Koshikawa Kasuhiko strongly opposes any action that heightens tensions and that the South China Sea issues are directly related to peace and stability and a concern for all. The Ambassador also supports the enforcement of the rule of law in the sea and work with the international community to protect the free, open and peaceful seas. On the other hand, the Chinese Embassy in Manila condemned the statement of the Japanese Embassy. In a statement, the embassy said some Asian country willingly stoops to acting as a strategic vassal of the U.S. It adds it is committed to managing differences through bilateral consultations. China also blames some external countries on the rising of region tensions. In an interview, Chinese ambassador to the Philippines Wang Xilian stood firm that Chinese vessels were conducting normal fishing activities in the disputed territory. Chinese fishing vessels have been fishing in the area for many, many years. Now those vessels are taking shelter in the part of the, you know, that uh, sea. I think it's a quite normal activity. There is no such initial vessel as claimed by some people. Any speculation is not helpful. Malacanang said President Rodrigo Duterte is confident that the tension between the Philippines and China will be resolved. The chief executive also plans to talk to the Chinese ambassador about the issue. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The second batch of Sinovac Biotech's coronavirus vaccine, Coronavac, donated by China, arrived in the country today. The vaccines will be allocated for health workers in the national capital region and four provinces. Asher Kada Pan Jr. tells us what Yes, Asher. Uh, yes, Asher. Uh, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, 
Neil, the government intends to protect healthcare workers providing service in the general community quarantine area where COVID-19 cases are high. This is by allocating to these concerned areas most of the 400,000 doses of Sinovac vaccines that the country received today. National Task Force Against COVID-19 Deputy Chief Implementer and Testing Czar Secretary Vince Bizon confirms it in an interview today. Marami sa mga bakunang to ay dadalhin dun sa area ng NCR, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, Rizal. So, dahil dito marami ang kaso, kailangan dito natin ibubuhos yung majority nito mga bakunang to. The second batch of Sinovac vaccine supply came from Beijing, China, as fulfillment of the Chinese government's commitment to the Philippines to donate 1 million vaccines. Here's Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Hu Wang Zilian. Yes, as uh, good neighbors, we have been helping each other in trying times. This is an, another joint effort, which shows the kind of closer friendship and partnership between our two countries. And we know you are facing a challenge of resurgence of cases. The Department of Health, on the other hand, expressed its appreciation to China and looks forward to receiving the million more dosages of Sinovac vaccines that the government procured. This despite initial hesitations by some healthcare workers preferring other brands of vaccines. Let's hear it from Health Secretary Francisco Duque III. The uh, reception and the uh, sentiment about the uh, Sinovac vaccine has improved tremendously, okay? So we have to maintain that confidence, that growing confidence rather, uh, for the Sinovac vaccines. Aside from Sinovac, almost 1 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccines ex is expected to be delivered in the country within the next days. Will? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Asher Kadapan, for that live report. The Philippines logged in 6,666 new coronavirus disease cases today. The new infections brought the total number of active cases in the country to 91,754 since January last year. The Philippines has recorded 684,311 people who contracted the viral disease. Recovery tally also jumped to 579,518 after 1,072 more survivors were recorded. However, this illness claimed 47 more lives, raising the death toll to 13,039. Meanwhile, a total of 508,332 individuals were already able to receive their first dose of COVID-19 vaccine as of March 23. The vaccines were administered in 1,759 vaccination sites nationwide. The COVID-19 vaccine brands that so far arrived in the Philippines were China's Sinovac, Biotech, and British firm AstraZeneca. The Okta Research Group is now seeing rising COVID-19 cases in the provinces of Pampanga and Batangas, which according to them should also be monitored closely by the government. Joan Nano tells us why. In order to contain further spread of the virus, the Okta Research Group has reported that they are observing climbing COVID-19 cases within areas outside the NCR Plus bubble area. These are in province of Pampanga and Batangas. Based on Octa's monitoring, Batangas has recorded more than 100% increase in COVID cases compared to the previous weeks. As of March 23, Batangas has a total of 1,021 active cases from only 475 cases on same period last March 16, while Pampanga logs 285 new cases in just one week. I think more than 100% compared to the previous week. So I think this has to be monitored closely, uh, especially since they're, they are outside the bubble. And uh, it could be uh, problematic if, uh, no, um, you know, we contain the virus inside the bubble, but uh, may kumakalat din outside the bubble. So I think we have to uh, look into this. 
Meanwhile, the Okta Research Group also said that they would prefer the implementation of a four-week modified enhanced community quarantine status in order to slow down the surge of COVID-19 cases in the country. We want to end this uh, and we want to slow this down to a manageable level. The worst surge in the country's history, no, as far as ano, the, this COVID, uh, fighting this COVID-19 uh, virus is concerned. And then maybe an MECQ of two weeks will really do it. No? Um, it will slow it down. For four weeks, it would really knock it out. We will knock it out. And tama-tama, magtapapasok rin yung bakuna by that time. Magandang timing. However, as they understand the economic impact if the country will revert to MECQ, the research group is proposing the soft MECQ where public transportation will still be operational to allow people to go to their work. On the other hand, Okta Group says the impact of the NCR Plus bubble on the reproduction number of COVID-19 may be seen in the next four weeks. But the experts admitted that this might not be easy as the number of cases are rapidly increasing. To be brutally frank, no, uh, yung at, sa ating mga pag-aaral, mukhang uh, mahihirapan tayo kasi yung grabe yung momentum na ating surge. Kailangan natin monitor, no, uh, maglabas maglabas ng monitor ngayon ng uh, Okta. Ang uh, lumalabas po ay pa, pa, pataas pa rin po yung mga kaso natin. May momentum na kasi siya eh, USEC. So hintayin natin ng ilang araw, let's give the bubble a chance. no? Uh, pero kung ano, kung pataas pa rin siya after uh, next week, eh, mukhang uh, kailangan na tayo mag-isip-isip no? ng uh, mas ma strict to pang quarantine classification. The government has placed Metro Manila, Cavite, Bulacan and Rizal under a strict general community quarantine bubble from March 22 to April 4, where several restrictions were implemented such as prohibiting non-essential travel, ban on religious gatherings, curfew hours, among others. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. For those watching our 24-7 live streaming on YouTube, please uh, uh, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Religious gatherings are no longer allowed in areas placed under the General Community Quarantine or GCQ. However, some churches chose to defy the restrictions. Janice Ingente reports why. After the Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 announced this week the prohibition of religious gatherings in Metro Manila, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna and Rizal from March 22 to April 4, some religious groups immediately announced the cancellation of their church activities, but some churches opposed it. In Capo Church, Manila, our team has observed that worshippers still gather in the church. The Archdiocese of Manila said they would hold religious services with 10% capacity. The Department of Trade and Industry appealed to the churches not to defy the restrictions for their own good. DTI Undersecretary Castello said religious gatherings are also mass gatherings and implementing physical distancing is not enough to curb the spread of COVID-19. Going to church, hearing mass is considered a mass gathering. Yes, you can observe physical thing, but when you start singing, diba? So, kung tayo sa simbahan, uh, makaka, ma, may saliva involved, so marirelease mo yon, and you don't know what's going to happen, kung saan pupunta, the droplets that you will um, release. On Tuesday, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the government can order churches close should they define the quarantine rules. The palace official pointed out that non-compliance with the IATF rules is not covered by the separation of church and state. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Manila Police District is conducting massive investigations on swab testing centers in the city which are possibly operating illegally. Dante Amento tells us why. Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso has ordered the Manila Police District Special Mayor's Reaction Team or MPD SMART to investigate the operations of swamp testing centers in the city. But yung problema nga natin dito, yung pinaglalagyan, kung makikita mo, even uh, dentist na lang, yung mga gamit nila, sinasanitize, 
eto hindi natin alam kung paano nila sinasanitize kasi isang isang cooler lang yung pinaglalagyan An initial investigation of the Manila Bureau of Permits and Licensing Office and the MPD Smart showed that an express swab testing center in Malate has been operating without a business permit. The same testing center transacts and accepts payment from its clients online. Allegedly, the facility uses only one cooler for the swab samples it collects from its clients. According to MPD Smart Head, Police Lieutenant Colonel June Ibay, this practice is risky. Lahat pina, pina monitor niya, pina inspect niya kasama ang uh, Manila Health natin. Uh, pina join niya yung kapulisan dito sa Special Mayor's Reaction Team. Katulad nga na sinabi ko, hindi lang uh, clinic, laboratory ang pinapupunta niya. Kundi even yung mga personalities na nag, nag uh, positive yung mga barangay concern. The local government worries about unauthorized swab testings that yield fake results and bring risks to the entire populace of Manila. City authorities call on the public not to patronize illegal swab testing centers, including those offering online transactions. The Manila city government is currently offering free swab tests, not just for its residents, but even to those from other cities, towns, and provinces. Dante Amento, UNTV. News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Cases of COVID-19 in Metro Manila continue to rise despite the actions implemented by the national government. And with most quarantine facilities fully occupied by patients, some local government units are now expanding their isolation strategies. Ray Pelayo reports. Quarantine facilities in Metro Manila are now in full capacity. Navota City has 300 isolation rooms, including the one built in the Centennial Park. But the city now has more than 900 active COVID-19 cases. With this, the local government of Navota's plans to build another quarantine facility. So, talagang punong-puno na po, kaya uh, sa labas na po tayo nagdadala ng, sa labas ng Navota tayo nagdadala ng mga um, mga kailangan ilagay sa quarantine facilities. Yan po ay tulong sa atin ng uh, national government. Malabon City also has more than 900 active COVID-19 cases, but the quarantine facilities can only accommodate 400 persons. Container vans were also converted to quarantine rooms to accommodate more COVID patients. The city LGU is now planning to temporary use classrooms. Sa ngayon po, dahil dumadami po, uh, it uh, sinulatan ng ating pong city, uh, ating mga pamahala, city government na ang serpent o kung pwede ay uh, makakuha kami ng, pansamat, ng mga uh, rooms sa, sa mga eskwelahan dito na hindi naman nagagamit ngayon dahil uh, online uh, class po naman ngayon na kung pwede ay pansamantalang magamit natin na uh, COVID facility para doon sa mga kapasitip natin mga kababayan. Pasay City also asked the support of the national government to accommodate their COVID-19 patients. Their quarantine facilities can only accommodate one-third of their more than 900 active COVID-19 patients. As of now, we have 164 patients in different isolation facilities and hotels that we have in Local governments identifies indoor gathering as one of the major costs of the rise in COVID-19 cases in the country. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A village chief in Caloocan City has been vaccinated against COVID-19 despite the warnings from the Department of Health to prioritize health care workers. JP Nunez will tell us why. A barangay captain in Caloocan City admitted he has been vaccinated with his first dose of AstraZeneca vaccine today as the city continues its vaccination program for barangay healthcare workers. Captain Leopoldo Manalili claims that he is part of the barangay health response team which makes him qualified to get the vaccine. So sa ngayon po, ako bilang po ng barangay at uh, head ng birth team or Barangay Health Emergency Response Team uh, kasama po ang ilang kagawad ang ating health worker kami po ay nabakunahan na 
Oh, kasama kami sa birth team kasi. This despite the warnings from the Department of Health against those who are not following the priority list. In the last record of Caloocan City, more than 572 barangay health workers have received their first job of vaccine, either AstraZeneca or Sinovac, but this number may increase as the city continues vaccinating other barangay health workers. Among other vaccinated are Barangay Health Emergency Response Team or BIRTS, contact tracers, Barangay Health Center dentist, private health clinic employee, and City Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office personnel. Mahalaga po kasi po, kami po yung pinakamalapit po sa COVID po. Kasi pinupuntahan po namin yung mga nag-positive, tsaka nilalagyan din po namin ng mga Cuban. So possibility, possibility po na mahawa din po kami. Kaya need po namin talaga po yung vaccine po. Doble ingat pa rin talaga, hindi pa rin pwede magpabaya dahil nandyan pa rin yung virus kahit may shots na kami ng vaccine, may chance talaga na mahawa pa rin kami. Pwede pa rin kami ma-infect pero hindi na fatal kung sakali na pag na-infect kami. Caloocan City assigned three vaccination sites to accommodate healthcare workers. Meanwhile, Caloocan City Mayor Oscar Malapitan continues to call out other barangay healthcare workers to get registered to their respective barangay to avail the vaccine. The city has allotted 125 million peso fund to buy AstraZeneca vaccines which will be used to vaccinate 300,000 residents. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Health says that at this point of the government's inoculation against coronavirus disease 2019, nobody should jump the line. Aiko Miguel tells us why. The most important people who are to be vaccinated at this point in time are the healthcare workers. The Department of Health calls on and warns its regional directors about individuals who get COVID-19 jabs despite not being included in the list of vaccination priorities. Huwag natin kunin yung bakuna na dapat dun sa tao na magliligtas ng ating buhay kung sakasakali. Now the DOH is closely working with the Department of the Interior and Local Government and the Department of Justice for possible sanctions to be imposed on such individuals, proven to have breached the prioritization framework. The DOH also reiterates that the vaccine doses that have yet to arrive in the country could be jeopardized if people keep on jumping the line. Lahat po tayo are entitled to being vaccinated. We just need to have this prioritization because hindi pa ho enough yung bakuna natin sa ngayon. That the public may report such instances of unauthorized COVID-19 vaccination through the DOH hotline 86517800. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the DOH says that the public's cooperation and ad adherence to the health and safety protocols are highly crucial. What with the current COVID-19 situation in the country, especially in the national capital region. Aiko Miguel reports why live. Aiko, go ahead. Yes, Diego, the Department of Health Epidemiology Bureau says that recent COVID-19 cases recorded in the country have surpassed the peak seen in July last year. The national capital region remains the epicenter of COVID-19 infection in the country, for having the highest number of positive cases. It is followed by Region 4A or Calabar Zone. Ng NCR, lumaki siya by 21% uh, across one week ang kalaberson po by 19%. So ito ay aligned no or consistent siya doon sa nakikita nga po nating pagtaas ng dami ng mga kaso sa mga lugar na to. Diego, with the prominent rise in cases, hospitals are overwhelmed. Beds for mild, moderate, severe, and critical cases of COVID-19 are occupied. In the NCR, hospitals have reached the high risk level with 70 to 85% healthcare utilization rate. With this, re with this current situation, Diego, the public's cooperation and adherence to health and safety protocols is highly crucial. Ayaw nating tumuloy-tuloy pa yung pagtaas ng kasong to at dito papasok napakahalaga yung ambag natin, yung contribution ng bawat individual, establishment at ang ating LGUs to 
um, implement no not just the minimum public health standards but well as well as the other safety protocols that have to be in place para po ma-minimize yung risk po natin no from either becoming infected or infecting other people with NCR hospitals reaching their full capacity for COVID-19 patients, cases are now being referred outside Metro Manila. Meanwhile, 17 cities in the NCR have reported cases of new COVID-19 variants. Seven regions, including the NCR, have cases of the B.1.1.7 variant, while six regions, including the NCR, have the B.1.351 variant. 85% of those cases are incoming international travelers. According to the DOH Diego, COVID-19 variant cases could be linked not necessarily to one person, but to a common setting visited by those patients. Sa Pasay, meron tayong nakita na common place or setting there the, na, na parang pinag, pinuntahan nila. No? Uh, they're not uh, linked to one person, pero yung pinuntahan, halimbawa, nakita namin um, offices, no? Par, pareho sila ng opisina, o pareho sila may pinuntahan sila mga health facility or market no isa yan sa common na setting na pinuntahan ng ating mga kaso Diego the health department reminds the public to be extra cautious now that there is an evident increase in COVID-19 cases and the new variants of the virus have been known to be more transmissible and that is the latest live back to you Diego Thank you Aiko Miguel reporting live the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, warned about an increased possibility of a magmatic eruption in Taal Volcano following an elevated increase in seismic activity. In an advisory, FIVOX said that since the Taal Volcano unrest in February, the overall volcanic activity has increased. The agency has recorded 259 volcanic earthquakes in Taal Volcano in the past 24 hours. In the previous week, sulfur oxide gas emission also reached a high peak compared to the previous month. There has also been an indication of magma migrating across shallow depths of the Taal Volcano Island, which increased the possibilities of a magmatic eruption, according to FIVOLS. The agency maintains an alert level 2 in Taal. It also reminds local government units to continuously assess and strengthen their preparation. Entry is prohibited on the Taal Volcano Island, Taal's permanent danger zone, especially the vicinity of the main crater and the Daang Castilla fissure. The Senate has approved on third and final reading a bill extending the franchise of Dito Telecommunicate to another 25 years. It holds the franchise given to its former name, the Mindanao Islamic Telephone Company or Ms. Latel, that was granted in 1998 and is set to expire in 2023. 17 senators voted in favor, while Senators Risa Ontiveros and Francis Pangilinan voted against the measure, citing cybersecurity concerns and threats to national security due to China Telecom's 40% ownership in Dito Telecom. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lacson is the lone senator who abstained from voting. Lacson mentioned before that he was a principal sponsor during the wedding of Dennis Foy, the CEO of Dito Telecom. The country's third telco player has launched its services in Visayas and Mindanao earlier this month. It aims to expand and serve Metro Manila by mid-2021. And for the news abroad, after the second deadly mass shooting in the U.S. in a week, U.S. President Joe Biden is considering executive action to bypass Congress for tighter gun control laws. Marvin Dolphin will give us the details live. Marvi? Kath, U.S. President Joe Biden may take action on his own to stop mass violence as he urged Congress on a hearing in the White House on Tuesday to swiftly pass gun control laws and that it should not even be a partisan issue. He called on the Senate to approve two bills passed by the House of Representatives that would broaden background checks for all U.S. firearm sales and close loopholes. 
On Monday, a gunman killed 10 in a Colorado supermarket just six days after eight people were shot and killed at Atlanta area day spots. The two shootings put renewed pressure on Biden to act on his promise. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future and to urge my colleagues in the House and Senate to act. We can ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines in this country once again. I got that done when I was a senator. It passed. It was law for the longest time. And it brought down these mass killings. We should do it again. To pass this gun control legislation in the Senate, Biden would need every Democrat to vote, as well as 10 from the 50 Republicans. However, Republican senators have already announced their opposition to the reform. In response, the National Rifle Association, or NRA, a powerful pro-gun advocacy group, tweeted a copy of the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment on the right to bear arms, which is valued by many Americans. Though a recent news poll reveals that nearly 70% of Americans support the addition of strong or moderate federal gun regulations. According to a review of CDC's annual statistics by Brady United, an organization that advocates against gun violence, on average 316 people are shot in America every day. Back to you, Kath. All right, Marvi, thank you for that live report. Twitter founder Jack Dorsey's first ever tweet in 2006 has sold as a non-fungible token for about 2.9 million US dollars. Abel Saliano reports why. Malaysia-based blockchain company Ridge Oracle CEO Sina Estavi won a bid to own the first tweet that Twitter Incorporated chief executive Jack Dorsey posted to the microblogging site in 2006. The tweet which said, just setting up my Twitter was sold for 2.9 million US dollars in the form of a non-fungible token or NFT. An NFT is a kind of unit data on a digital ledger called blockchain, where each NFT represents a unique digital item and is not interchangeable. The bidding was sold using platform Valuables owned by a US-based company Cent. According to Valuables, Dorsey's tweet will still be on Twitter but the NFT will be owned by Estavi who stated that he wanted to encourage involvement in charities using crypto space. Dorsey confirmed via Twitter on Monday that 100% of the proceeds from the NFT sale will be converted to Bitcoin and will be donated to an organization called Give Directly to help alleviate poverty in Africa. Give Directly is a global not for profit organization specialized in delivering digital cash transfers and actively supporting Kenya, Rwanda, Liberia, and Malawi. Abel Siliano, UNTB News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. For the fourth time in the two years that the Israeli parliament held an election, the results were inconclusive and no parties won according to the exit polls retreat. Early Briones tells us the details why, live. Go ahead, Early. At for the fourth consecutive time over the past two years, the election for the Israeli parliament concludes to no victory as the exit polls reveals that there is no winner. Both parties, Net both parties, Netanyahu and religious nationalist allies, and the anti-Netanyahu fell short in votes. This again leaves Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's fate uncertain and prolongs the political deadlock continued since the first election, which concluded in no victories. These inconclusive results, however, ultimately shows a referendum on Netanyahu's style of governing. This indicates a movement of Israeli electorate towards the right wing, promoting the West Bank settlements and going against the concession for peaceful communication with the Palestinians. This has set a huge division within the country. In the past, exit polls had a tendency to be inaccurate, and this feeds into the wishes that it would end in the tying of votes. President of the Israel Democracy Institute, Johanan Plasner, mentions that currently there are three potential outcomes on the surface, and they are Prime Minister Netanyahu remains in leadership, the change in group which will render Netanyahu in the opposition, or a fifth election. Kat? Thank you, Early Briones, for that live report. 
The Norwegian Coastal Administration has received the green light to start the construction of a stad ship tunnel, which will be deemed as the first ship tunnel of the world. Nina Bascon reports. Norway has announced that the one-mile-long and 118-feet-wide tunnel traversing the Stadhavet Peninsula has received a clear-go signal from the Ministry of Transport and Communications for the project to be initiated. In a press release from the Ministry of Transport and Communications, Minister Nod Aril Duarada said that the Stad ship tunnel is an exciting project and funds to start it will be available now. This proposal was first announced a year ago by the Norwegian Coastal Administration or NCA. This tunnel will be named as the world's first full-scale ship tunnel. Building this will cost around $330 million and will take three to four years to be completed. According to NCA and the Minister of Transport, this project will improve the safety of the ships from being impacted by bad weather and rough currents in the area of Stadhavet Sea. It also has traffic light system to regulate the flow of the vessels. The world's first ship tunnel is planned to be completed by 2025 or 2026, and the only option for those curious in going through it is by boat. Nino Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Kat Lumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. And those are the reasons behind the news, March 24, 2021. I am Marilyn Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.